Hey guys, it's Kathleen Clippert. I'm your creative, intuitive techie VA. And today I wanna to show you how to work in layers in Canva. And what we're gonna do is create this image. And um, it's just taking a few, well, what I would think is simple steps, um, but just taking a couple of different steps and you can turn images that you find in Canva into something completely different. And it's all about learning how to work with the layers and working with some of the little um, effects that are within Canva. So let's jump in and see how I created this. So what we did is I started with just a blank page, it's just a blank Instagram page. And I'm just gonna blow it up a little bit more. Maybe not. Whoops, there, there we go. So what I started out with, let's look for the background. So I went to backgrounds and to be honest, it was like one of the first ones that popped up. I really love this background and with the, some of the work that I do and the people I work with, it just fit perfect for this little example here. So I want to show you a couple things. First off, when you're working with background, when you're wanting to create, let me let go of this guy here. When you want to create a background here, if you look, it fills the whole thing up. So there's two different ways to do it. You can either just click right here, drag, you know, your, it pops your background in on your page. Then you have to like resize it, you know, going like this get it to fit. And then, you know, if you happen to pull it this way, it's like, okay, you're, it's a lot of maneuvering and adjusting and it's trying to get things just perfect. That's honestly, to me, that's the hard way. Now, so what we want to do is just hit our delete button, come back to this guy. And when you click on them, don't click and release, click, hold the mouse button, your left mouse button down and drag them over and look. All of a sudden, wow, it fills the page. Let go of your mouse button, and there he is. It's already filled on the page. Then you have the option, if you double click, you can drag it around. And you'll notice that because of the, sty the, stipe, the type of this picture, this is more of a um, landscape picture, so it's going to hang over the edges of this square and also because we're using a square for our shape our, our post shape versus um you know like an oblong shape um so you know it's it's going to um tighten up to either the top or the you know or the top and bottom or the sides um based on the shape of the image you're putting on and the shape of your um do, your document you're creating or your item you're creating. So we could here then move it around. So there's more, it's more to the left or the right side, move it. So it's more to the left, leave it centered. If you, let's say you really just wanted this yellow and pinky area in there, then you could grab the corner and drag it. And then, so it's more that way. So let's see how that looks. So it would, as you can see, you zoomed in on just a specific area. And this helps you, you know, it conforms it to your page that you're working on. So you don't have to adjust it all the time. But I want to take it back to where it was originally. Let's see, is that it? Yep, go back here. Oh, and guys, I can't tell you how many times I forget when I do something and I mess it up. Undo is your friend. Or if you undo too far, redo is your friend. So don't forget these two buttons are here. Um, you know, the, as long as you haven't exited out of your document. And when I say exit out, it's, it means as long as you haven't clicked the X button, you know, the X up here and closed out that window or um, clicked here and gone home, you can still undo. All right, so here we have our background and that's pretty much the same setup as we have here. What I did next is I went searching for a doggy. 
I just typed up here in my elements dog. Takes it a second to load. Now, what I wanted was an actual picture of a dog. So I click here on photos. That strips out all the drawings. So you don't have to worry about anything that's just an illustration. You're only going to have something that's a photo. And the one I had selected originally was this guy here. I'm going to pick a different one this time. Let's say I'm going to take this guy. I'm just going to click on him. And what I did on the original photo, you notice here, you know what? I don't want to confuse you guys. So I'm just going to take this one off, even though this is a cute one. We're going to go back with the original because otherwise you're not going to know what I did. I mean, you will, but it's going to sit, sink in better if I go stick with what I started. So here I just single click on him. That throws him in. Wait a minute, though. Where's all this back? This background. This background wasn't in this picture. No, it wasn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to we already have him selected. I'm going to come here to effects. I love working with these effects. I mean, there's so many different things you can do, but the one we're going to work with right now is the background remover. So we're going to click on background remover. Canva is going to work its magic. It may take it a minute and while it does take a sip of whatever you're drinking. I'm drinking water. So like I said, sometimes it's usually a little faster than this, but I'm recording. So it takes it a little bit longer. Now, if you really wanted to, you could come in and clean up some of this, this grass blades. I kind of like it like that. And honestly, it's laying, these grass blades are laying on top of the dog and it would be almost impossible to get them all out. So, um, at least in this system. Um, so I'm just going to leave it like that and say apply. So now here we have our little doggo, our happy little doggo, and I'm going to move him more. So he looks like he's more centered right there. Now we added some wings because this is just, um, I was, I was inspired by somebody I knew who recently lost a pet, um, one of his fur babies. So, um, this is why I did it this way. So we want to put some wings on there. So we'll scroll down. All I did here is come up to my little search bar under elements and do wings. Actually it was angel wings. And I uh, initially, I looked at it, I tried some of these realistic looking ones and I just didn't like the way it looked. It was too, I don't want to say harsh, but it was just, it didn't give it the right feel. So what I'm going to do is here, click on graphics, because that means I just want to pick something that's more of a drawing. And, you know, there's all sorts of ones out here. I could choose from. And I think this is a set I selected. Yep, they are. Now here's, it's like, hmm, they're sitting on top of the dog. Well, that, that's not going to work, is it? You know, that just doesn't look right. It just, mm -mm. so we want it to go behind. So if you have the wings still selected, just click on position and backwards. And now the dog is in front of them and you can, I'm going to click off that. You notice when you get to where you're in the section with the dog image, the, another box shows up so that you just pay attention to which one you're grabbing if you want to move it. So we want to move these wings just a little bit. And I think I want to turn them. Just a little bit. Yep, I like that. Okay, next step we wanted to do to make it, I, I didn't like the color in these wings, so I changed them. 
Not all graphics will allow you to change the colors. So just pay attention to when you select them, if you pay attention and see if you have these boxes here. And the other interesting thing is that sometimes they'll give you these boxes where you can change the colors, but it doesn't change everything on that particular graphic. And I think it's the way they had created and stored the graphics um, initially and, and that, but um, do the best you can. If you don't like them, just remember, use your undo button, you know? But what I wanna do is I wanna change these colors and I did them so they matched our pup a little bit more. So I think I pulled in, you scroll down here. These are, are um, these are different colors that I use. So that, like if you're in a document and um, you've used a bunch of colors, they're gonna show up up here. This next section are different palettes that I have. Now you'll notice these have crowns next to them, which means I have a pro version. So if you're not using pro, you're not um, gonna be able to have your palette sitting, sitting here. Um, so you'll just have to use either the default colors or whatever colors they show that are part of the images that you have on your page. Um, I really like this section here where it shows you the photo colors because that helps you tie in to what you're creating, um, you know, or what you're working with. You know, you can get your colors to all tie in together. So it's really helpful. So here for the dog, we want to go with a dark, this dark brown. That'll be the outline. Then, then um, this is the like this color right here. I'm gonna go with the brown, with the light brown, I should say. And then the back of the wings. I think I did white. Let me scroll up. Yep, I think I used a different color, the brown I used for this one. I think I originally used that. Yeah, I think I like the light color better. So there we have our dog, the wings, and the background. So we've got three layers going on here. And look at all the changes we've made, and um, it's starting to come together. Now, if you decide you want to move this dog to a different area to make it easier for you, what I suggest is you click the dog, hold your shift key down, click. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to show you some. Click the dog. You notice these little bars right here on each of the sides? We can pull that in and make his little section actually tighter. So like if you didn't have the wings, but you wanted to truly center him, you could pull this in so his image is more of a square and tighter so you could fit him in the center. So now that we did that, I'm gonna click on him, hold my shift key down, click on the wings, and now you can see the dotted lines are going around the group. So what you can do is come up here in your upper right hand, click group. And now this is going to be considered like one image. And that way, if you want to move him around, you can move, you can move them both and you don't have to worry about um, having to move each piece individually. So you can move them this way. So you wanted to get him centered. You could move it until this line here shows up and then this, you know, the cross. So basically you get the crosshairs. This would tell you that he's centered in the page. Now, I don't always want to have to, you know, drag around and do all of that. So what I do is I like to come up here to position. Middle. It puts them in the middle of the page up and down. Center puts them in the center of the page left to right. So there he centered. All right. So the next thing I want to add on here is our text. All dogs go to heaven. 
And I can already tell I probably need to move the dog down, but we'll see. So get back there. Here we are. Now we'll go to text. And I believe this is available on all of them where you can click to add text. Um, these are fonts that I selected and add, added as my um, logo, to, or not logo, my branding, part of my branding kit. So these are fonts that I like to use. So we're going to click on this one, add a heading. And it took me a while to realize this, but when you add text, it already has it highlighted. So all you have to do is type. So all dogs go to heaven. And I put an exclamation point, I think, this time. I don't think I did that last time around. So there we go. And I just moved him, clicked on these crosshairs to grab the guy and move him up. Okay, here he is. I'm not liking the size, the shape, or the color of this All Dogs Go to Heaven. If you notice on the original, it's larger. It's got a little curve to it, pink. Oh, and maybe it has a little bit of highlighter or, or low light or whatever it is you call it behind it. So we're going to make some changes. We selected it all here. To change the color first off, click here on your text color. And I use this pink. This was my, oh, oh, in case you didn't know, if you hover long enough on here, it'll tell you the hex, I think it's the hex color code for the colors. So if you ever see in another system, or if you're wanting to use, say you have your brand colors and you know the code, you can, you can um, pull them up that way. Actually, all you would have to do is click add new color, type in your code, and there it would be. This one, like I said, I have already loaded, so I'm just going to click on it. There we go. I want it bigger, though. To increase the size, you either click on the plus, or what I usually do is just click here and then where the numbers are, and there we go. We're going bigger, bigger and bolder. Now, I had it curved. How do you do that? I mean... That, that was something I always wanted to do is I like have curves in my text and I like to do it all different ways, you know, have it go in all different ways. But how do you do that? Click here on effects. And if you notice down here, they have now where you can have it either straight, basically no shape to it, or curved. I'll be happy when they add more shapes to this, but right now we've got curves, so that'll work. So you click on curve. Well, that's nice, but it's a little too curvy, don't you think? That's not really going to fit the, the feel that I'm wanting to go with. So what I need to do is look down here, right underneath when you clicked curve, it's got this bar. And the key thing for you guys to notice is right down here, there's a little dot. That's what tells you when you're going from curving down, like this one is, to curving up. Once you cross to the left of that dot, you're going to start curving up. So I'll show you. Here we go. Okay, we're just barely curved. Oh, look, now we're curving up. All right. We could leave it at that. That's not, that's not how I did it earlier, and that's just... Not quite the feel I want. So I'm just going to do, let's do 20. And you could either drag this guy over left or right, or you can type in here. When you're doing the curve going, instead of going down, but the curve is going up, if you're typing the number, you would just type, type a negative. So here, that would be negative 20. You hit enter. And it curves up. We don't want that, so I'm just going to hit the 
undo button. Try that again. Undo. There we go. All right. So I like about where this is sitting. I need to move this guy down. So we'll just drag him down just a hair. There we go. And look, you know, so this box section, I just lined it up kind of with the almost the bottom of these letters. All right, so we got the text. We've, oh, we've got the text and the color and the um, curve. Oh, I think I have it a little bigger than I did before. It's hard. You can't, you can kind of see it, but there's a little bit of shading going like around the letters. So let's go and see what that is. So we come back to our, we select our text, come back to effects. And we've got all these different type of effects. What I discovered when I was going through them, it's like I, basically what I do is I just click through each of them and see which one calls out to me and feels right. A lot of things, they have to feel right for me. Um, so the shadow, that one just, it just didn't have a, a good feeling to me. Lift, that's actually what I used. And maybe because it's called lift and I'm thinking of going to heaven. Um, so that's the one I used. And you can just see it, there's just like a little bit of a shadow kind of underneath it. Um, but the other ones are hollow. Yeah, that just didn't feel what I wanted. Splice. Again, it's just something about it I didn't care for. Echo, that was just way too busy for me. But I could see that be great in something else. Um, then we have Glitch. And I didn't care for the colors in this one. I could change them, but I just, nah, it just still didn't have that feel. Neon was Potential that I could go with. But again, there was just something about it. I didn't feel right for me. So I'm sticking with lift. And with each of those, you'll see that there's different things that you could change on them. On lift, all we can change is intensity. So we can take it stronger. And it really depends on your background as to how well this is going to show up. So that does show a little th heavier, but I'm going to keep it right about 50. I think that's where it started out. Just wanted a little lift. Okay, we click off that. We've got our, look at this, we've got our background, so layer one. We got our text, layer two, and we actually changed it up a little bit. We got our wings, that's a fourth. No, I can't count. Third layer. We got the dog. That's the fourth layer. Now we're going to add in another layer. What we want is this little box right here. So we're just going to come back over here to our elements. Click on the X. And that was really just one of these lines and shapes. You could, if you wanted, you could type in... Um, like um, rounded corner there's rectangle. You could do something like that. You know, get all the key words in there. And I'll pop up all these different things. What I knew is what I want what I wanted was just the basic shape. So it's easier just to come to lines and shapes see all and it pops them up and there's a couple different styles in here the one i used i believe was this one here and what's nice is you notice it's got the little bars on each of the sides so i can drag it in as wide or you know i can drag it out wider i can make it narrower so see you can go this way or you could do it the other side. 
and you know you can make it taller or shorter so we want it fairly short I'm not sure how wide yet but that's not gonna you know we'll put it here that's way too big so what do I do well you know look I can't drag it down any shorter well what what's up there that's where these corner guys come in handy just click on them and look at that you can make it now what happened is I went like this and then all of a sudden I just took it somehow I clicked and sit sideways but look you can bring it down so let's say maybe that's about the okay guy give me here that's about where we want them we're not sure how wide yet but if we need to we can go as small as a square or we can go wider so we'll leave them kind of wide I don't like this color it doesn't doesn't flow with me so we want to come up here to our color picker and I'm going to select this color that's the color I use which happens to be one of the colors out of the background image so we just click on that guy so now we have our box and then we want to put in some text for pup so we'll come back over here to text I'm going to use the subheading I think that's what I I can't remember if that's what I use but this is what we're going to start with right now so we'll just click subheading throws it into the middle of the page that's okay we can drag it down here and it's okay if it's not lined up perfectly right now see if I clicked off here it's like and I wanted to type in it when I click on the subheading right now that just selects it if I double click now I have the whole thing highlighted and I can um, change my wording so we're just we just call this guy pup and we just came up with a date I think it was like 120 2015 through 6 15-2021 I can't remember what dates I selected but that's what we did so now if we wanted to get these two guys centered you do a couple different ways one I want it centered on the page um, from left to right I could just come up here go to position center then come down to this guy click on here go center so those are centered that way but it's not the text isn't centered in the box so what do I do you could you know be clicking on that you have the box selected and then just drag it down or hit your nope see I forgot about that your arrow keys do not move it around but you'd have to manually drag them down or you click on him you have this box selected hold your shift key down click around where your text is you can see you have both the text and the box selected we don't need to group it we could if we wanted to but mainly what we want to do is make sure they're both centered on with the within each other so you just come to position and what we're looking is we want it like in the middle so we want the text I call it centered they call it middle but in the middle of the box so you click on middle and look it, it shifted both of them just a just a hair so now they're where you want them to be and you could then group them so then if you wanted to move if you needed to move it around you want to make sure that that group is centered it is it's there now, I don't think I kept it with this style font or that color let's look no I changed it so you just come down here you can click 
you've got it selected you know that you can change the font and the color because when you clicked here in this group it gives those options so here we're going to check on the text color and we took that to this purpley color which is actually i think the tongue or the mouth color we change that we change the font i'm not sure what i had i knew it was a a heading type font oh it was i think i changed it to chunk five so we're going to put that chunk five and is that what i had chunk five nope i had something else as chunk five i think this other one we had before was more wasn't a heading it was a serif So just wait for the, these to load. And, oh yes, it was the Noto. So I'm going to change that to Noto. See, to me, that looks more like it could have been an engraving. Now, when you look at this, you're going to say, that box is awfully large. It's much larger than it needs to be. And you're right. So let's grab, you see this little bar here we can get the crosshairs grab it and we're selected the group so you notice it's kind of shrinking everything that's more about the size I want however that's not centered anymore so just click there come back to position and go to center and it puts it in the center of the page and there you have it. You made you, you, you made an image that was from completely different set of images. It's I mean, and it does it. You can tell, yes, that it was something that was put together and did not naturally happen this way. But it has this more professional quality look to it than if you were trying to um, piece it together in other ways, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, it's something, when you work with layers, you can have a lot of fun, especially when you start working with the different effects on your images and um, change the colors up and everything. So when you start playing around in Canva, I'd love for you to just share and you could do it as easily as this. Just click share, type in an email address like here, here's mine. And then all you would have to do is change this little share link to view. And then I would be able to see what you created. Or you could actually, if you post it on Facebook or Instagram, you could just tag me at Kathleen Clippert and then I'll get to see it. But yes, I'd love to see some of the things that you create in here.